lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you here today. Uh, as I said, my name is Phil Johnson. I welcome to the Reading Business Network. Uh, I I work with Rose Murphy, Dave Webster, Dawn Thompson and Sue Brackley, and we will be guiding you through this meeting this morning. Reading Business Network was set up to create closer links between Reading businesses and Reading business support agencies. Monthly business meeting held on the last Thursday of the month and quarterly face to face. The meeting is for Reading businesses who want to find out more about business development within Reading, supported by Reader, Thames Valley Let, Reading Council, Growth Hub, and many other local business leaders. Uh, we want Reading businesses to work together to generate more synergy between them. We want to know more about your business and all, and so please put all of your contact details, any offers that you have, in the chat and how people can get hold of you. Um, we would encourage everyone to join our community on LinkedIn or in Facebook and share more about yourselves. If you feel brave enough, then an introductory video will be great and we will share that on the YouTube channel, which Dave has set up for us. The meeting is being recorded and will be available to watch later. So you can catch up on those meetings on our YouTube channel and allow you to, because uh, it'll be a shame <clears throat> to miss out. And uh, there, if you want to look back at previous meetings, there's some fantastic content that we have there. Um, I hope you are looking forward to a very Reading-centric business meeting. Now, this week we are refocusing back on production studios. Uh, Shinfield Studios is the most exciting thing that's happened to Reading since Reading <clears throat> Football Club were promoted in 2006. Excuse me. Uh, we actually won 5-1 on, on Tuesday. Can I just say that's 5-1? And that's a very exciting thing for a Reading fan to actually say that we actually won a match at all. Um, but we are very much focused on production studios and uh, how we can all get involved with working with them. Next year, we will be doing at least two live events um, uh, regarding production studios, and we'd love you to come along to those. But this is a bit of a follow up event to where we were uh, two months ago at the Hilton. And so, therefore, I will ask Sue, um, would you like to introduce Emily to the group? And um, and then Emily will tell us what she does. Thank you very much. Thanks, Phil. Yes, definitely want to introduce Emily. <laughs> Hi, Emily. Um, Emily Moulton is working very closely with Screen Berkshire, um, based at the University of Reading. And she's got the very exciting title of Business and Employability Manager for Film, Theatre and Television, which is quite a big brief, quite frankly. <laughs> but Emily is here today to talk to us about the work she's doing, um, particularly around training and upskilling. And I think the key thing we're trying to drive is how do we get more of our local businesses with the right skills for the, that particular screen sector? But I will hand over to Emily because she knows lots more than I do. Fab. Thank you for that, Sue. If okay, am I okay to share my screen? Yes, Thank you. <laughs> you can. Perfect. Thanks so much. Hopefully you can all see that. Um, I can't see your faces, so if somebody could verbally just say yeah, yes. Yeah, that's correct, Emily. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, as Sue mentioned, uh, my name is Emily. I am the Business and Employability Manager for Film, Theatre and Television at the University of Reading. Now, that's an exceptionally long title and is a nightmare to fit on a business card, as you can imagine. Essentially, um, it's the new role that's been brought in, born from the Screen Berkshire Initiative that I'm sure you're all aware about at this point. Essentially, this role has been created to facilitate the pipeline of talent from education into industry. Now, I know you're probably thinking, okay, that's great, Emily, but we're not students, uh, we're businesses or other creatives already working in and around the industry or looking to get in the industry. But essentially by me and kind of my colleagues working to facilitate that pipeline, we're strengthening the local industry um, networking opportunities, and as Sue mentioned, we should be having a lot of things coming our way. 
So I'm trying to essentially prepare students and young people as best as possible um, and create mutually beneficial relationships between studios, uh, production houses, local businesses, whether they're creative or not, um, things like that. Now, although I work with the Department of Film, Theatre and Television, I also sit within the employer engagement team at the University of Reading. So what I'll talk about is ways that you can engage with students and the wider university on a wider level, as well as how you can specifically engage with students from film, theatre and television. I hope that all sounds OK. And also feel free to slow me down. I'm whizzing through this. <laughs> Perfect. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the ways you can engage with the wider university. Some of you may be familiar with Reading University. You may have already had links with them in some respect. But essentially, we work really hard to try and keep local and Reading and keep things as contained as possible while linking up with different businesses and employers um, across Reading and Berkshire. Some of the schemes we run um, is the Reading Internship Scheme. Now, this is a fantastic scheme um, where essentially businesses can um, get an intern for either a summer placement or for part time during term time. And for an SMEs and kind of smaller businesses, this can be partially funded. So you can access a plethora of students um, and be paid towards their pay, essentially. Um, it's a really brilliant scheme and we've had some fantastic internships take place because of it. It might be something you're interested in. I know we've got a huge selection of businesses joining this call. Um, so some of you might be there being like, oh, we, we can't take an intern. It's not for us. But do take a look into it because investing in that future pipeline now is fantastic. Um, and like I said, it can be partially funded for you if you're eligible. Aside from that, we have things like the Thrive Mentor Scheme. Now, this is a fantastic, quite low commitment scheme where essentially you can mentor a young person in any field. So this doesn't necessarily have to be film, TV or theatre related, although we're always looking for more creative mentors if you're out there. It's essentially a, a scheme where you sign up and get paired with a student based on your interests their career aspirations, um, and you meet for about, I think it's one hour a month. Once I graduated university, I actually became a Thrive mentor uh, myself and mentored students into a few placements in film, which is really fantastic to see. Um, but it's a great scheme and really worth kind of looking into if you're happy to give up about an hour a month um, of your time to mentor a young person. And it looks really good um, on your CV and things like that. We also operate an online jobs board, which some of you might be familiar with, you might have already engaged with in the past. Essentially, this jobs board that we run called My Jobs Online is this massive platform where you can essentially post vacancies, you can post placement opportunities, you can post, I was going to say pretty much whatever you want, definitely not whatever you want, um, but any opportunities you have for students to engage with your business. Um, it's Essentially, it reaches 17,000 students that we have at the university, but also graduates. So if you do have any graduate opportunities coming up or you're looking to kind of hire some uh, part time work over summer or maybe you're interested in hosting a placement, um, contacting our um, careers team and advertising a vacancy on My Jobs Online is a fantastic way of getting your business name out there um, and boosting any engagement you want with your business. Kind of brings me nicely onto my next point, facilitating placements and work experience. I'm sure you'll know, especially in this industry, um, work experience and kind of placement opportunities are so vital in getting that step up into industry and just getting a taste of what it's like working with creatives or just businesses in and, in and around the creative environment. So we're always looking for any businesses from any um, sector who would happily take placements or facilitate work experience, whether that's shadowing opportunities, anything like that would be massively welcome. Um, and it's something that we always look forward to kind of building these relationships with. And lastly, fairs and events. 
So some of you might be aware that the university hosts loads of careers events throughout the academic year, mainly in autumn term, which we're just coming out of. Um, but we often invite over 80 odd businesses um, to come speak, interact and connect with students, students and other businesses whilst at these fairs. You can find out all information about this via that QR code, which I'm fingers crossed works. <laughs> um, and essentially, it'll take you to our employer landing page where you can basically hear everything I've just said, um, but in a more digestible, probably less fast format. Cool. So I'm whizzing through this, apologies, but I will take uh, questions at the end. So um, for those who are looking to kind of foster more creative relationships with uh, students from film, theatre and television, and like I said, enhance that pipeline um, and just make sure that we're all working collectively as local Reading businesses and creatives with Reading students, with Reading industry bodies. Um, these are some of the ways in which you can work with either myself or my team or our students to kind of facilitate these creative opportunities. Um, you can cast and crew your productions with our students. People kind of massively overlook this, um, but our students have a wealth of knowledge, experience, and they're always looking to enhance their skill sets. So if you're ever working on a small film and you need crew, or you're looking to cast a performance, or maybe you're just doing a creative project, maybe you work in kind of uh, digital media or content creation, and you've got a project coming up that you'd love a fresh set of eyes on, speak to our students. They're really keen. They're always looking to kind of enhance their skill sets. Um, and this is something that we're really keen to keep pushing. As well as that, um, we're always looking for people to facilitate an industry talk, masterclass or workshop. Um, I noted down some of the kind of businesses we have in the room with us right now. And the wealth of experience you guys have collectively is huge. And I know not just my creative students, but students at the university would love to hear about how you got into industry, um, what you do day to day, and just about the businesses you run. Um, also connecting, networking, and recruiting emerging talent. If you're looking to kind of recruit, tapping into the university's large pool of students is a fantastic way of doing that. And like I said, providing work experience or placement opportunities is vital in any sector. So not just film, television and theatre, but whether you work in accounting, whether you work in finance, whether you work in fine art, digital media, investing now into the future um, workforce will really just help develop the pipeline into these industries as hopefully we build more and more opportunities for everyone. Fab. That was a whistle stop tour of absolutely everything. So apologies for going so fast, but I'm happy to take any questions or um, feel free to pop them in the chat. If you're looking to reach out to me, that is my email address or feel free to scan the QR code and connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, even if you're not looking to engage with film theater and television specifically, I can put you in touch with our careers team, our employer engagement team, or just the wider university in general. Um, we're really keen to keep building links and we want to support businesses as much as we want you to support us. <laughs> it's a nice way to round it off. Thank Is you. Is there anybody who got any, thank you, Emily. Is anybody got any questions for Emily, please? Emily, can I just ask, I suppose, what's next steps for um, the training around Screen Berkshire? Because Fantastic. obviously I know you've got a boot camp running in... Well, the DWP have got a boot camp running in January, I believe. Yes. So Screen Berkshire, because it's such a kind of large collective, um, Reading University in my role is very much focused on the student um, upskilling, whereas resource productions um, and the kind of that side of things will be running boot camps to upskill those looking to get into industry um, looking for those to develop more business links. I highly recommend taking a look at the Screen Berkshire website um, and following Screen Berkshire on LinkedIn, as well as resource productions. Um, they're the people that are kind of driving that arm of it a bit more, um, whereas I'm dealing more with the student aspects of it. Um, but like I said, we're all working collectively to try and build the same outcome, but all our remits are slightly different, if that makes sense. No, it does, Emily, because it's about that pipeline, isn't it? And making sure that we've got everything in place from 
young young youngsters still at school right the way through to retraining oldest like me who might want to get into the industry. Maria, your hands up. Hi, uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, to thank Emily because um, I've um, experienced uh, interns from Reading University and had a really great experience. So I just wanted to, um, as a as a as an employer of one, just say that it was they were it was great to to work with Reading Uni to get someone in. And um, when I was working at Southall Park, we were a registered charity as well, so we were able to get a bursary to help pay for the intern. So that really helped. Um, yeah, get get them on board and be able to afford it. So it was it was well worth it, and um, we had a really good person because we had a great interview process and and uh, a great uh, selection of students to choose from. Thank you. <laughs> so good to hear. Excellent. Okay. Well, we, if there's any more, we'd like to contact Emily later. That would be amazing. I'm sure you'll put all your details in the chat, Emily. Thank you very much. Um. Now, Chris Mitchell. Chris Mitchell and I have been friends uh, on and off for about 30 years, I believe it is. And we first met. Chris now works in the film industry and other musical uh, genres. Uh, he's a composer. He's a published composer. He puts on lots of music in different areas. And um, Chris, would you like to introduce yourself and um, speak for us this morning? Hello, it's really good to to meet you all. I first connected with the Reading Business Network maybe just still during COVID era, and it was such a um, inspiring initiative. And uh, there's lots of new initiatives in Reading just in recent years, and Shinfield Studios is one of them, and uh, it's inspiring lots of conversations. Um, I wanted to kick off by saying last night um, I was in Winchester recording a choir for a film score. And we were in a church because it's where the choir are used to singing. And I spoke to the, to, to the vicar there a couple of days before. She said, do you mind, we, we've got a group of cubs in and they'll be there while you're setting up. And I said, no, that's perfectly all right. And I, I said, well, they might even be interested because this is the thing about the skills pipeline, isn't it? I said, they might even be interested. So we were setting up and she brought them in and and they started asking questions. And the first question is, oh, what's the film about? So I said, well, it's about a boy. It's called The Boy in the Shed, this film. It's about an autistic boy. What's autistic was the next question. They're quite young. What's autistic? And the answer I came with, up with, it's someone who thinks differently to most people. And I wanted to mention that this morning because this season that we're in needs people to think differently. And then the next question was, I, I was holding something like this in my hand. And they said, what's that? Well, I said, it's a microphone. What's that do? And I said, well, when you make a sound, the air moves. And inside a microphone, something moves. And when it moves, it changes that energy into an electrical signal, which you can then uh, cra capture something of substance. So this is about ideas and vision and turning energy and moving air and sound into a thing of substance. And Shinfield Studios is only one of a number of examples of that that we could think of, but it's a very dramatic example we've been driving by along the motorway. And I just wanted to set that scene. My journey uh, as a career in music and sound and had a big impact on me my first film shoot, a friend said, would you come and record the sound? And it was 28 days nonstop. It was exhausting. But I found it so inspiring. We had interns from Ravensbourne College. We had industry seasoned industry veterans. I was running the sound recording. And for me, I work a lot on my own. And to be in a team dynamic, which most of you might be much more familiar with, it was such a buzz to work towards a creative goal and... At that time, I was teaching in a school. I went back and I said, I think we need to introduce film and media production into our school. It's such a powerful experience working together as a team. And I think this is something to, to celebrate, um, working together to a creative goal. I then built the building that I'm in. A friend is an architect, purpose-built studio, Clear Sky Studio, and I'm now full-time composing and producing. And... 
Also, around COVID time, I had some ideas for community projects. And I spoke to Lorraine Briffitt, who's probably here on the call. And she said, Chris, you've got some crazy ideas. Speak to Molly Cleaver. So Molly was working at the university. Spoke to Molly, and that led to a collaboration with Molly, a collaboration with Lucy Daniels at the council, Music for Healing, Reading Global Festival, various things just came out of conversation, a bit like this microphone, the energy changed. And then Molly said, I think you need to speak to Darren about Shinfield Studios. I was so inspired by the vision, and it was a huge vision. And those original vision statements said it's a hundred year vision. It's called Innovation Valley. There's Cine Valley, there's Heritage Valley, there's Cyber Valley, there's Medi Valley. And I thought, I don't know anyone who talks about a hundred year vision. This is amazing. And when I spoke to Darren, this thing of the skills pipeline, which has already been mentioned on this call came up and thinking about how is that going to be resolved? It's easier to put up a building in a way than to recruit thousands of new people into an industry, which is what we're talking about. And not only that, I think it's really early days. I think the identity of Reading is about to change big time. We are going, we are becoming a global creative hub. Just pause and let that sink in. It's going to affect all of us one way or another. So, Fast forward to the present day, I started to work, work with Resource Productions and Dominic Unsworth, who he heads it up, is an inspirational fig figure. Terry Adlin, who runs the training, is like everyone's dad, is just encouraging and supporting. Amazing guy. And not long ago, I had a call, Chris, what are you doing next week? We've got the launch of Screen Barcher. Would you be head of the sound department for the day? Which sounds very grand, but it's not. And basically, a little insight. So for the day, this was on the 3rd of October. So it's all so recent. We took over screen two in Shinfield Studios. Um, there was a day to create a, a kitchen inside the soundstage. I couldn't believe it walking in because I've walked past there so many times. The sound insulation in there is bonkers. You cannot hear the motorway. It's not echoey which for an aircraft hangar size space is also crazy. Um, the art department, heads of department, art department, costume, makeup, sound, camera, production. It's a small army, which you've seen on the credits. And then Gareth Ellis Unwin, you might come across him, Os Oscar winning producer of the King's Speech, happens to be local. So he's in the mix. And we all come together, we all pull together. There's 60 interns. I've got six of them to give a little bit of experience to. VIPs, this is the launch of history. Something is going on, something big. Um, I've been given seven minutes, so my closing comments are my wish list. Number one, can we fulfill the potential of what's happening to become a global creative hub? What is the infrastructure that's needed? Do we need big thinkers, hotels, leisure centers, um, meetup spaces, um, accommodation, just the sky's the limit. A friend of mine came from the States and I took him to see the building site at Shinfield and he said, I can't believe this. This is like photos of Hollywood in the 1930s and 40s. He, just, he was in shock. He said, this is huge. He couldn't believe it. On my wish list as well, a co-working space for creative freelancers to help build community, generate ideas and collaborations. Another thing on my wish list, a film and TV production academy. Um, there's the university are doing a great job, but there's so much space. Maybe a film school could relocate from London to here. Wouldn't that be great? And so many people in their 20s I'm having conversations with. How do I connect? How do I get involved? And as a dad, opportunities for young people that's on my wish list that's my that's my talk thank you very thank oh, you for listening chris do you mind if we ask a bit more please we, do yeah um so we said i've seen you in the video and different than holding a micro boom microphone just just tell us about who are the people you're speaking to there and how 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 we can get involved with helping you or or more more about the actual day you would have when you actually went to the studio? Yes, yeah, so um, 
there, as I say, there were heads of department. We got in the day before to meet each other. On the day, there's these connections with Reading College, with the University of Reading, various key people, uh, opportunities for training, opportunities for experience. It's a very tight ship on the day. A little bit of an overview to the sequence. You have generation of ideas for a new project, uh, the development phase. You then have a small army of people that need office space who are pre-production. They're thinking about, okay, where do we need to be and when? How many people do we need to be involved? How much is this gonna cost? Lots and lots of nuts and bolts, pre-production, visiting locations. When the production phase happens, which is what would happen at Shinfield, everything by then is in has been organized to the nth degree. You can imagine the costs. So everyone needs to know exactly what's happening at what time. It's like a military operation. It's very strict and you have to understand the protocol because time is money in that situation. Um, the director is responsible for the overall artistic vision. And so they have to keep in that clear headspace, which is why they've got all their minions doing all sorts of other things to make it all happen. And the producer is the overall nuts and bolts person making sure that everything's in place. And um, so, the, you know, the, the, the producer is a key person, too. There's just so many roles. It's worth understanding if you, if you go online, you can look at what these different roles are if you want to have an overview. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, so pre-production, pre who would be the person we would be talking to? Because there's lots of people who want to get into the industry. And um, yeah, and well, um, I, yeah, I guess, I guess another thing to explain is that the studios are just uh, boxes that are then rented out to production companies. So you can speak to Shinfield Studios, but they will say, well, oh, do you want to hire our space? That's what they're doing. But it's the production companies, it's Disney Lucas, it's Apple, it's Amazon, it's all uh, BBC, whoever else, that um, potentially we need to connect with the producers there because they're the ones that are going to be hiring all the services, all the trades, all the, the teams, all the people to make these things happen. Excellent. And, okay. and can I mention, I've put it in the chat, Another really significant meetup event is happening on December the 13th. I know because I know I'm linked in with Resource Productions and Screen Berkshire, together with Filming in England, Moxie Hotels, I'm just reading from the top of the thing, MBS Equipment are hosting at Shinfield Studios on December the 13th, 6 till 9 p.m. Filming in England Connect. It's a Berkshire industry mixer. It's free. So I've put the link in the chat anyone that's remotely involved with loads of experience or no experience should try and be at that event. Excellent. Do we have any questions for Chris, please? Anybody want to shout out anything? No, I just think it's fascinating. I mean, I know it's definitely going to draw a lot more, you know, traffic into Reddin it's inevitable um yeah no that's all it was really good an interesting presentation that's all i've got to say thank you thank you maria has raised your hand i'm i'm interested to find out um in terms of the lines of communication directly to shinfield studios and the production companies how we can sort of not necessarily ensure but encourage um the sort of the recruitment of of, of people from the region because obviously if these are production companies coming in like apple or netflix or whatever they're you know i mean a lot of these companies just hire people that they know maybe in london or whatever so it'd be good to know how what yeah. is the joined up kind of communication trail of of making sure that they do look at and source people from reading and the outskirts and you know in the in the thames valley region well, there are people on this call like Nigel and 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 Phil that have probably got some answers to that. But um, Screen Berkshire has been mentioned a couple of times. They've been it's been set up. It's a it's a collaboration between various bodies and is funded to do what you're talking about. So connecting with Screen Berkshire and Resource Productions, who are based in Slough, but they're key players in Screen Berkshire. Those are my two tips. That does actually lead us quite. Thank you very much, Chris. As always, a pleasure. We'll, I mean, we'll come on I'm, to some of that stuff, Maria, that you just mentioned. I, I was mentioned. about to say, and then we'll, yeah. we'll move on to Sue now, who probably has answers to some of those questions. And uh, if there are any other questions coming up, please put it in the chat and we will try and ask them. 
Sue Brackley, please. Let me see if I can share screen as well. So I've definitely got some ideas on next steps and what we're looking to do locally. Um, what Chris said about it taking 100 years is, uh, <laughs> it feels a bit like that at the moment, but I think what we're doing is just taking, you know, trying to eat a Mars bar in very small in very small mouthfuls, but get it, getting there and some really ambitious ideas for next year. So I'll, I'll run through some of those now for you. Let's see if I can share my screen safely. We can see that. <clears throat> good, good. Let me just go to slideshow. This slideshow. Bottom corner or top corner, whichever wish one you want to do. I'll see that in a minute. Beginning. Cool. Okay. Right. right. So that's me, obviously, and that's just what I'm going to be talking about. And. Chris touched on the amount of businesses that are caught up in the supply chain. Now, this list is actually from Resource Productions. They put together with um, Berkshire Lep on our behalf, on Reader's behalf, a big piece of research on the opportunities that we've got locally connected with the um, sector growing, mostly through Shinfield Studios, but obviously through the developments at Winosh as well. So the the number of businesses that can get linked into the supply chain for productions is, I think, again, as Chris said, it's like a village. It, it's almost everything you can imagine is needed in terms of, you know, whether it's food, whether it's office equipment, whether it's contract law, whether it's power, whether it's accommodation. Th this is pretty much, I mean, this is a list. It's actually not comprehensive and Dom, Dom Unsworth at resource said you know it's not it's not comprehensive this is just some of the key stuff that will be particularly valuable valuable locally to be able to deliver because you know big companies don't want to have long supply chains they prefer to be getting this stuff in locally from good credible companies where they can so that's that's a list that I think is a bit of an eye-opener and certainly some of the organizations and businesses locally we want to get involved um this i hope is useful in terms of you starting to get your name on lists regionally and nationally um these are supply chain uh organizations that you can actually get onto registers and they do they do have everything on there have a, have a look at these websites we'll share these slides afterwards but if you haven't got some of these links then have a look afterwards for places where you might want to start thinking about getting your business linked in oh that's going on to nigel slides but the one thing i do want to talk about is what we're doing in terms of events next year which phil mentioned earlier so next year we're running two master classes we talked about how do you get into the industry? How do you make those links? How do you know that you've got the right skills and you're set up properly to work with the industry? Because let's be frank, it's an industry like no other in terms of its speed of turnaround, the hours that are being worked, the demands that are being made on all the supply businesses, let alone the production crews. So it's actually learning about what's needed, what the pluses and minuses are, what happens in terms of your self-employment status? Because again, most of the organizations working, particularly in the production phase, are, phase are going to be self-employed or, or small businesses. Um, and, the, and again, I think it's not unfair to say that actually recruitment processes are quite opaque. And I think that's something that the recently produced BFI screen skills report does draw out, the fact that routes into the industry are actually quite opaque in terms of a lot of it is who you know and those contacts which is why networking is going to be so important going forward so the two events we've got coming up next year we're running one in february which will be for trades so we're going to be talking with people who are already working in the industry and Yulia, my colleague who's on the call mentioned the work she's doing at the moment actually tracking down and building up the lists of production companies and production professionals who are reasonably local, who might be looking to recruit from local companies. And the plan is we'll be getting some of those people into the room so you can actually meet some of them. But also we'll be talking about 
how you do it, what's involved, and what a typical day working on set might look like if you're a carpenter, for instance, and the work that's involved in that. So that's in February. And these are all, all local, by the way, they'll be in local hotels. And then in April, we're going to be doing a professionals masterclass. So looking at some of the people who are probably more typically involved in pre and post production work. So accountants, lawyers, um, insurers, like my husband who does work in the industry, um, but all those other professionals, HR people, all of those other people who are needed to you know, pay the wages, to do the contracts, to actually make sure that if there's an accident, the public liability insurance is in place, that all of that stuff, it's, it's a massive story. So those are the two events to look out for next year. And I think those are gonna be pretty vital in terms of how we start driving the local story. Um, so we'll share the dates as soon as we have those dates, but that'll be February and April. And I think those will be super useful. Um, Yulia, I don't know if you just want to say quickly what you're doing in terms of the um, lists that you're trying to get together, which is no no mean feat. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes. So basically, I just uh, are trying to figure out who is involved in um, uh, into the film and um, movie production industry at the moment. I'm trying to put this list together, as, as you just said. So if you would like to, um, if you know anyone who is supposed to be in this, uh, if you want community or a database, please be um, uh, kind to share my email address or ask them to connect with me on LinkedIn because it's very, very important for us to create a big community so we could have local networking events um, and, you know, just make this community bigger and stronger. And yeah, so... Exactly. Um, that, that's, that's perfect, Yulia. Yep. So we'll, I think Yulia has shared her email in the chat. Yep. Um, so please do, if, you, if you'd like to be involved in that. Um, and I think the other aspect of that is obviously finding those people who do actually recruit. Because for those of you who were, who were at the meeting um, at Hilton Hotel back on the 4th of October, Leslie Ann McFarlane from Berkshire Film Office was talking to us about how that recruitment works and how that procurement works. And very importantly, there are lots of different people who do procurement. Um, you know, there's there's a there's a producer at the very top, but there are also a lot of other assistant producers. There are other people who lead other departments who do a lot of the hiring as well. So it's actually understanding that structure and we're working with resource productions on that to get all of those names as much as we can together to actually create that local cluster. Uh, and I think, Nigel, that probably leads very nicely into um, what you're going to talk about. And again, some, I think Chris, was it Chris or Maria that actually discussed the idea of the, the local clusters and what we're gonna do there. So can Great. I hand over to you, thanks. Nigel? Yeah, thanks, Sue. Um, yeah, no, um, what, what Chris Mitchell said was a nice little segue into that. He was talking about a global industry, a global business. Um, and I suppose the takeaway uh, that I wanted to give you today was was that you know, Reader and all the partners that have, have been mentioned today working on creating a bigger pond for us all to fish in. Um, and I, I liked Chris's ideas about thinking differently and and changing things into substances. That's what we need to do. I mean, a lot of our work, as, as we've talked today, the, the whole raison d'etre of RBN is about you know, supporting local business, circular economy, creating supply chains, but you've got to have a supply chain to something. Um, and, and what we're looking at in the new year is developing uh, an inward investment strategy. So this is about creating a bigger pool. Um, we know, you know, the catalyst, uh, if you look at the scale of the opportunity, I mean, it's massive, the you know, 112 billion pound. And, and when you compare it to IT software and games, um, then you, you're really talking a massive you know, business opportunity, a global opportunity, a, a, an economic opportunity for the country, but but also now that we have Shinfield Studios, um, a catalyst to to grow our economy and the business opportunities um, for the area. Um, if but there but there are you know constraints to growth, a number of constraints there about the labour supply, and that's a lot of what we're talking about: skills, training, and um, the supply chain, um, and and 
you know, provision of space. So businesses have to work from somewhere. They don't all work from home. Um, and, and we need to provide the right sorts of space in the right sorts of places. So we'll go to, to the, the next slide, Sue. Um, so, so the way we approach it, in a sense, Oh, go to the next oh. slide, Sue. Oh, all right. For some reason, um, it's not letting me change slide. Okay, but essentially, what um, what we've got at the heart of this is the catalyst that it, you know is, is Shinfield Studios, and we know that you know essentially at the heart of that is um, production studios. They're they're the space, the floor space where production companies can come and 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 create the films and the activities that they do. So that's at the heart of it. One of the things is we don't have those production companies and the Netflix, the Channel 4, the BBCs. They're not resident as they are in some other studios nationally, internationally. So one of the things is, you know, ideally we'd like to attract um, a production company to be resident. Uh, I'm sure Shinfield would. So they're using that all of the time. So that's at the heart of it. That's the honeypot in a sense that we're all gathering around. Um, beyond that, then you need those dedicated companies, I think what Chris was talking about, the pre and post production companies. And essentially those are companies where the screen film industry is their industry. They're part of that industry. They call themselves, you know, screen film uh, companies. That's their dedicated market for their, um, for the work that they do and the services that they provide. And then beyond that, you get a wider circle um uh of companies like yourselves many of you on on the call today which are supply chains which screen film might not be your main um market um you'll have other markets that you provide services to um or you might not even be in the screen films market and you wanted to get into it as part of your market mix of your company so um that's the wider the wider pool and for you businesses you know locally we need to create a bigger central pot um both the within the studios and those dedicated film screen post pre-production uh, companies as well so that's all about inward investment attracting new companies and that's a big campaign uh, that we want to go out to if you move to the next slide we so uh, in a sense um we're looking at reading's global competitive advantage the fact that you know we have um, a lot of office space available. It's high quality office space that companies are really looking for at the moment. Um, we've got the labour pool. We've got the university expertise, both in terms of student um, resource, in terms of professional academic expertise and the global reach of the university. And then we're creating all this networking opportunity, the catalyst, resource production, the screen films, uh, looking at um, developing pools of labor and skills and training. We need to communicate that out globally. And that's going to be part of the campaign that Reader will be heading up next year to uh, help relocate um, those industry wide businesses to locate around the Reading area, around the honeypot, uh, and then feed them into that supply chain network into lots of the companies here on the call today, the work that Julia's doing with Sue to, to network and create that supply chain. And, and grow them out of business that all of you can do to, to, to provide that. And part of the message going out is that we have that dedicated network. We have um, the uh, arrangements in place so that, you know, you relocate your company to Reading. Not only is a, a great um, honeypot of business to be done uh, in film, but we have the supply chain networks. We have the systems, processes. We can connect you into the local sector, into local business network, um, and you can get you know what, what you need um, to be able to thrive as well. So it's those selling messages to to get companies to relocate. So you know, in short, creating a bigger pool, um, you know, with with the uh, Shinfield Studios at the heart of that. Um, and you, you know, you improve and you increase uh, the capacity of, of Shinfield and bring in production companies to be resident. And you get that ripple effect then out to um, attracting um, the screen films industry pre post production. And then a further ripple effect into a range of supply chain companies that, you know, we've talked about. There, there are many different trades and business services, professional services that can provide to this industry and many opportunities. So, We'll be going out with that sort of um, more regional, national, global 
um, campaign next year to to grow the um, the, the capacity and, and of the of the whole industry. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Nigel, for that. Uh, uh, Nigel and Sue, actually from Reader, uh, what that's on. Um, Sue, have we got any other things we want to touch on about Reading and uh, what's going on in the area? Well, I was just going to say, are there any questions attached to that? I know that's an awful lot to take in, and it does. It is all first steps, but I mean, those are those are genuine steps that are moving forward, and we're working with all the right people. Um, we're working with colleagues in Wokingham Council because obviously Shinfield is just over the border in Wokingham, so we are working with Wokingham Council. Um, and through Berkshire Economic Development Officers, we are working with um, colleagues right across Berkshire because obviously there's lots going on in other areas, not just Winash, but you know Pinewood, Marlow. Um, talk about more development in places like Milton Keynes. So we really want to get ahead of the game and beat them to it and be the best. Um, so that's that's really important to us as well. Um, so I don't know if there are any other questions around that, but we'll certainly share everything we've got at the moment and we'll share those dates with you as soon as as soon as we have them. Now I think it's really good and positive for many businesses, but what lets it down is the town centre. It's really <laughs> dying, okay? And I keep hearing things are happening, but, you know, it's taking too long and the wrong kind of things are coming to the town centre. We need unique individual shops. We need to build a culture there that draws people to the town centre. Trouble is, Karen, we don't, we, we're not the landlord. The council isn't the landlord for any of those buildings. I know. And we, we don't want the types of, you know, do we need any more tattoo parlours or nail exactly. bars? No, we don't. Um, we probably no. don't need any more barber shops either. But no. these are the people that, um, yeah, that are taking up property at the moment. Or stuff is going to leisure, which is the other, the other, um, not not just in Reading. This is this is nationally the rise of um, more leisure activities, which are great. They create activity. They create interest in the town centre. Bring families in. Um, but I, you know, I'm I'm with you. But you know. I don't know if Nigel well, I think I, I, I mean I just I just guard against you know Reading Town Centre is not dying uh, no. it, it's changing it's got things we don't like it's got great opportunities um, you know Station Hill who would have thought that three four five years ago um, you know he's he's literally coming out of the ground had a little hiccup last week but you know yes it these did things happen uh, but you know that is a phenomenal um, uh, development and it's the gateway your people come out of the station and they won't see that sort of um, horrible dirty building and car park and hole in the in the floor they'll see you know shiny glass buildings and and industry and business and retail going on as an entry gateway yeah there are improvements and we're you know we're working with the council there's going to be a major piece of work done fingers crossed in January um, quite a bit of um, work on the high street and the, the neighbouring streets, um, improving some of the physical look of it. You know, we've got improvements in waste collection, big issue, um, but it's not dying. You know, no, wherever, know. there's not many empty shops, so it's just getting the right mix. We'd all like more independence. Yes. Um, you know, there's a big opportunity over at um, Minster Quarter, where the civic offices, the town hall offices used to be. Uh, that's a big hole in, in the floor at the moment, but there are big plans for that. Yes, it's taking time, but these things do. I mean, th these are big operations to bring around, get the right sort of development taking place. But that's the, the final big quarter of Reading to be redeveloped. Uh, we've got loads of new flats and housing. You know, we might not have so many office workers coming back to the town centre, but lots of people are living in the town centre. You know, we're going to go from four or five thousand people living in the town centre within the IDR you know, so, sort of 15, 20,000 people in the next five, 10 years, they they will demand services, you know, whether that's retail, hospitality, um, they, they will want so So it's it's not dying, it's just changing, it's developing, it's 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 organic as a town centre. It, it, no, I hear it, that, yeah. I hear that. But look at Bracknell, for example, that's what we're missing. It's, it's Bracknell's tired. a new town. Bracknell was, you know, built as a new town and, and you know, was had to be knocked down and rebuilt because it had, concrete cancer it, it's just a shiny new 
you but know, Wokingham's not. Again, it's town. It's, the right it's not got any history or an organic growth like Reading has. A great history and culture and development. Um, you can't compare it with Bracknell. No, but I could. Right, work can, I, I can, I draw, can I draw? Can I draw? I've got here. one more question. Right? No, 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 I love Karen. Reading. Karen, and Karen. I love Karen. Reading. Let's, I do let's love let's Reading. It's the I know you do. But you know. I, I can I just say, I'm a, I'm, like many of you, I'm a Reading born and bred man, and uh, Reading has evolved. Yeah, but Reading it's the town centre. I love it. It's the central bit because we've got so many gorgeous, gorgeous buildings, Harris Arcade, things like that. But you know, and they could be so attractive, and that's the bit that frustrates me. I, I think I think please I, put put for your name to a petition to stop putting a digital screen outside Marks and Spencer's. And like as, you know, it's as, okay at the station for call, but we don't want a digital screen outside Marks and, and Spencer's on landlords. Broad Street. And stop landlords just sitting on property and leaving it empty for decades in some in some cases. Mm. And until the government does something about that, Karen, it's all right them saying they're gonna change planning, but that usually works against local areas. In terms um, of what landlords want to do when they come in. Um, anyway, yeah. It's nice that people, We're here to talk nice screen skills. Are passionate about the Reading area, and that's why we're actually here today, which is fantastic. As as uh, Sue and Julia was Julia were saying, um, if anybody has more information to bring to the party to help us to push the Reading area forwards, please can you share with us because we are all on a new journey with Shinfield Studios, production studios, et cetera, et cetera. And if we actually pool our energy and our resources together, that will help us uh, to move the synergy within the Reading businesses forwards. Thank you so much to everybody who's contributed today. Um, thank you, Chris. Thank you, Emily, uh, Nigel, and thank you, Sue. Um, thank you all for being here today. We, we, we do appreciate you joining us today. Um, any final thoughts, um, Sue, before we then close the meeting? Um, just a bit of a plug for the Christmas season, um, if I may. So but please, please, please have a look at um, Reader's website. If you're interested in events that are taking place, we've got some fantastic, not just wonderful choral, uh, carol concerts, but some really great events, um, games, nights, cocktail making sessions, lots of different things happening around the bid. It's exactly what Karen was talking about, stuff that's actually there to energise and, and lift the, the town centre and make it a place where people, you know, have lots to do and enjoy being. So just have a look at that. Lots coming up through Christmas, including the um, Advent events calendar, which should be fun, will be fun. And of course, Winter Wonderland down at uh, Hills Meadow, which I've got to say, it does look really fabulous. It does indeed. Uh, just to say, I will be caroling with the Salvation Army Band uh, most Saturday <laughs> mornings. Uh, I will be on the tuba. So if you want to a uh, favourite carol, come on and say hello to me. Uh, I would love to say hello to you personally. Um, I think we'll draw. Tracy, Tracy has Tracy. raised her hand. Tracy. One, one final comment. Um, we just heard Nigel's plea to resist the planning application for a big digital screen at the end of Broad Street. Um, the uh, deadline to comment on the planning application is today. So I've just put the link in the chat. So if you don't want a big, energy hungry, shiny digital screen at the end of Broad Street, please click on that link and make your feelings known. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Right outside Marks and Spencers, opposite the Oracle. Oh, dear. Um, right. Dawn, can I come to you for a, a closing quote, please? Yes, you can. I still can't get my screen to work, so I do apologise for that. Clearly, travelling upsets the uh, equilibrium in, in my home office. <laughs> um, however, um, I um, have looked at some quotes that have... Um, uh, have links back to the screen industry to keep it in theme and um, quite like this quote from Dead Poets Society, no matter what anybody tells you, words and ideas can change the world. And that's amazing. And I think Chris would say music can as well. Uh, so have a fantastic Christmas period. We will be back in January. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you.